over 100 million people in the United States of America can trace their ancestors stepping foot right here on this island. This island was the only barrier between leaving a country that is war-torn or impoverished or filled with religious persecution and getting to a place where finally there is freedom and opportunity and free, free will to do anything you would like, to be anyone you would like. That is New York City, United States of America, and this is Ellis Island, right by the Statue of Liberty Island, which we can see there in the distance. And here we can see the old hospital. So Ellis Island originally was only the size of this half of the island. It was greatly expanded when most of the immigrants came here from 1892 all the way to 19. 54. And as it was open all those decades, over 12 million people came shuffling through this center where it allowed people to come in or not. Because the United States of America, even though they had an open door immigration policy, wanted to make sure the right people came in. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go inside the museum. Let's go. And this is where the 12 million immigrants pass through here. People coming from all around the world, maybe Ireland or Italy or Croatia, Russia, where many of the Jewish immigrants came from, Poland, who ended up moving a lot to Greenpoint, Brooklyn. And then people from Latin America, including Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. Also people from the Middle East, especially Syrians coming through here. Now this was the baggage area where a lot of people left their baggages right there. They had to be separated from the baggages in order to start getting processed, in order to become an American citizen and to be allowed to work in this country. Now even though they had tough restrictions on who could come in, specifically on checking if they were having a disease or not, Many, they checked for many diseases, including lice, including uh, a disease that uh, affected the eyes and caused blindness. And they also checked if you were a political refugee, but if you were making sure you're not an anarchist or someone with intentions of revolting against the US government. And with all those restrictions, only about 2% of the total immigrants that came to Ellis Island were not allowed to come through. The rest, 98%, were allowed to come through. And let's learn a little bit about their stories, shall we? We have a photo of the Chinese immigrants that came here. Now, they mostly came on the West Coast, and it was basically outlawed for most, for basically the entire time Ellis Island was open. is the museum. And this museum is really cool to take your time and really be able to embrace it and really check it out. We trust still in the good sense and feeling of our fellow citizens that they will unite with us in maintaining now, the museum is filled with a bunch of awesome things, so take your time reading all the history of immigration here in the U.S. Immigrants are a massive portion 
of the U.S. population. They make the U.S. Unlike other countries around the world, we have a far higher percentage of immigrants. And they come from all around the world, not just from Europe, but also from Africa and from Asia. We have many immigrants as well. In South America, of course, especially recently. Now, here's a timeline of people coming here to America, first from the West. So a lot of people came here from England, majority, majority, and that also extended to people from Scotland and people from France, and then Dutch came here and established New Amsterdam. Now, when Ellis Island was open, people ended up calling this the Plymouth Rock of the modern era. The modern era was the late 1800s, and Plymouth Rock was the very first place where a lot of the newly arriving European refugees were coming from. People who were seeking religious freedom, mostly Puritans and many other similar religious sects like the Quakers as well. Right before the 12 million immigrants came through Ellis Island, they saw this sight. The Statue of Liberty in the distance, the first beacon of hope and light for this new world that they are about to embark in. And that's precisely why. This is one of the most famous icons in the entire world. It's the tallest statue in all of North America. And it's a symbol for many people from all around the world, especially the more than 12 million people that came here while Ellis Island was open in order to seek freedom, opportunity, business opportunities, a new life, refuge from their war-torn countries. New York was a symbol of a new start to life. And when they saw the Statue of Liberty, that was the indication that they were finally here. This was dedicated in 1886. It was built by Frederick Bartoli, who was a famous uh, Parisian sculptor. And he wanted to give a gift to America for the friendship that France and America had at that time, ever since the Declaration of Independence and the American Revolution. This was a huge project because this was going to be a huge statue that would stand on New York Harbor and be able to withstand uh, storms, or high winds, anything that the harbor can throw at it. So he needed to enlist the engineering work of Gustave Eiffel. Now you might recognize that name. Gustave Eiffel is the same guy who built the Eiffel Tower. And together they end up making a statue that is absolutely gorgeous. At first, when it was before it was uh, transported here to New York Harbor, in order to raise funds to build the statue, they toured the Statue of Liberty all around America. Uh, for example, the torch, you could have seen it back in Madison Square Park, back in, before in the early, 18, early 1880s, and then also the head uh, and the crown were in Philadelphia and many other places all around America. And they also sold tiny little statues. So we see this, the tiny little statues of Liberty as a, as a typical New York City souvenir. Or they were New York City souvenirs before the statue was even here in New York City. Uh, they were souvenirs all the way back into the 1880s. Over here we can see the wide expanse of New York City, which we saw, which we're going to see a little bit better view from the pedestal. But just take it in how gorgeous this is. Now, why did they pick this island? What, what island was this before it was Liberty Island? Well, this was Bedloe's Island. And Bedloe's Island was a military base. So that's why we're standing atop of a star-figured military fortification. The pedestal is built on top of the military fortification, which, let's check it out right now. Let's go. We're right now on the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty built by Richard Morris Hunt. Now, when they originally built it, it was a lot more expensive than the statue itself. And in order to pay for this massive pouring of concrete and granite, they had to raise funds from the public. 
Luckily, Joseph Pulitzer came to the rescue and he offered this genius campaign to offer to put your name on the New York World newspaper, the newspaper he owned, in exchange for some donation to the to house the statue of Liberty in France. And the being a wild success, and people came pouring in with funds. More than $100,000 was raised. Now, over there in the distance, we see Ellis Island. And Ellis Island, a lot of people don't know about It's connected by a land, by a bridge. You can access Ellis Island by, by a bridge, right by New Jersey. So we're actually in contested waters. A lot of people think this is New York Harbor. No, it's technically New Jersey Harbor. New York just owns the island itself and the island of Ellis Island. Everything else around it is actually New Jersey. and down there is Stan Island with red, the Verrazano Bridge on the other side. One of the, the longest bridge in the U.S. The longest suspension bridge in the U.S. It's the speech of the Bridge. Here we see the Statue of Liberty in all of its full glory. Now, it used to be Over there we have beautiful views of Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn over there, and the Brooklyn Bridge right over there. And we are on top of a star shape. This is because before this was Liberty Island, this was Bedloe Island, and it was a military base. A very popular place. I'm shrunk in enough. That was serious. Okay, go down. Go down. Straight. Straight. Do you think my legs have been stuck? No, no, no. I got it. It's complicated. No, we're good. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. Slide over here, Carlos. Vamos. You're kidding me. We are inside one of the more than 170 plus steps to get all the way to the top of the pedestal. And here we can see these huge bolts. These bolts anchor the statue down so the statue doesn't fall, fall over during, say, like a super storm Sandy or, or a blizzard. Uh, and these come back all the way from the original construction of the Statue of Liberty, and they had to use a huge wrench to screw them up. I can only imagine how big the wrench would be. Solid metal. Now, over one million people came to see the dedication of the Statue of Liberty back in 1886. Imagine boats lining up the entire New York Harbor. People coming from all around New York City, all around the U.S., as far as they can come during that era, right at the height of the railroad era. And it must have been an impressive sight when they came over here. I can only imagine just the sheer excitement to see New York City be crowned with such a beautiful, majestic statue. Now, the mystery is, who is the Statue of Liberty based on? Well, there's a few theories. One, the most obvious one, it's based on Athena or Minerva, which actually you see a lot of Athena and Minerva's all around New York City. But 
Some people think it might be based on Bartoli's mother. That seems a little bit of a stretch. Another thing is a lot of people think it could be based on Bartoldi's mistress. And that people also think is rather more myth than reality. The fact is no one actually really knows who the Statue of Liberty is based on. But it continues to be a magical wonder of the world, especially with these beautiful sights of New York City. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. I'm Ariel with Urbanist. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone.